In ECE 3.43, Signals and Systems, you study the Laplace transforms. Given a transfer function, you can find the step response. In Modern Control, we'll be doing that, but we'd like to look at how to quickly determine the step response of the system so we know where the poles belong, or given the transfer function, an inspection tell you how it's going to behave. To do that, we do use a thing called dominant poles and second-order approximations. The idea of a dominant pole is as follows. Suppose I had a third order system with a slow pole and two fast poles. Turns out the slow pole is going to dominate the response. If I were to approximate this third order system with a first order simplified model that keeps the same dominant pole, I'll have almost the same response. Likewise, given the step response of the system, I can tell you pretty much what the transfer function was. At least I can tell you what the dominant pole was. Um, to do that, Either you have a single real dominant pole, giving you a first order approximation, or a complex dominant pole, giving you a second order approximation. Let's first look at first order approximations. If you have a first order system, you only have two degrees of freedom. What one would be the DC gain? Let us go to zero, the steady state value, in this case is one, is A over B. Here I made A and B the same to make the DC gain one. B, which is this number here, affects the step response. As B gets bigger, the system gets quicker and quicker. The settling time is a way to approximate the real part of the dominant pole. e to the minus 4 is 0.02, so the settling time is roughly 4 over the real part of the pole. If the real part is at minus 1, the settling time is 4 seconds. If the real part goes up to 2, it's now 4 over 2, 2 seconds. When it's at 3, 4 over 3, 1.33 seconds. 4 over 4, about 1 second, and so on. Likewise, given the step response of the system, I can tell you what the transfer function is. Given the settling time, I can tell you where the pole is. 4 over the settling time is your pole, the B. The DC gain tells you the ratio A over B. Next, let's look at second order systems. If we have a second order system, I've got 3 degrees of freedom. The DC gain is let S go to 0, the ratio of the numerator, the last term of the denominator. Here it's 1. So the DC gain, steady state value is going to be 1 per step input. I also have, in this case, complex poles. This has a pole at minus 1, plus minus J4. The real part tells the settling time. It decays as e to the minus t, the real part of the pole, so it settles out in 4 seconds. If I make the real part of the pole minus 2, and now settles out in about 2 seconds. Make the real part of the pole minus 4, and now settles out in about 2 seconds. 1 second, like that. That's the real part of the pole. Turns out the real part is half of this term. The complex part of the pole tells you the frequency of oscillation. Here, this has a pole at minus 1 plus J4. This oscillation, this frequency, is 4 radians per second. The period is 1.6 seconds. If you use your calculator, 2 pi over 1.6 is 4. If I make this minus 1 plus minus J3, now the complex part of the pole is J3. The period is 2.2 seconds. 2 pi over 2.2 is 3. The overshoot also tells you something about the pole. This tells you the angle of the pole. That's what this table helps show you. If I know the angle of the pole, um, the damping ratio zeta is the cosine of this angle. So zeta is 1 when I have a real pole, 0 when I have complex poles. The overshoot, right here for the step response, increases. As the damping ratio gets smaller and smaller, I get more and more overshoot. So likewise, given a pole, given a step response of a system, I can tell you what the transfer function was in the settling time, the frequency of oscillation, and the overshoot.